That's kind of a, a net gain for Spokey there. There was a lot of counter and counter countering going on, uh, plus not to mention the fact that these medics are just constantly picking up bodies. Uh, so I haven't seen what happened. Uh, let's see, there's the mortar team. I'm just trying to keep track here. I know that there was a, uh, a squad was produced at some point from that, but I haven't kept track of it, so who knows. I could be completely wrong, too. Don't listen to me. Like I said, it's late at night, man. Come on, chill out. <laughs> So anyhow, trying for the back half one more time, but the close combat Volkswagen Deers will have none of that. And just that was just a miracle. I don't know if you guys saw that, but completely retreated uh, right across landmines, just slightly above them, just in this little gap here. But apparently that was not enough to set them off. But you'd think six guys scattering across that little uh, gateway would have set them off from that angle. But he's uh, pretty lucky today. So anyhow, close combat Volks moving around to the left. Accomplished Volks holding this point. Pack safely camouflaged. Another pack, safely camouflaged. I'd like to see this pack move up a little bit, though, honestly. Uh, it's not super effective way back here. Maybe just, like, a point up here would be good just to kind of cover, because, you know, uh, Greyhounds don't mind poking their heads in here every now and then, but this is a little far away. Meanwhile, yeah, just kind of chilling out here. Big, big infantry ball here moving right along. Uh, let's see where he's going to go with that. And uh, Medic Bunker doing its thing. It looks like we've got a heavy machine gun team just kind of poking out this window here for whatever reason. He may have oriented that incorrectly. As you can see, there's a whole squad of nice-looking riflemen up there, but uh, I don't think that machine gun... Oh, it's poking out that side. And there we go. He's got it facing the right way now. But uh, thankfully, it took a little while for that machine gun to get some shots off, and uh, these flamethrower engineers are going to be able to kind of back in here and do some serious damage uh, versus these units uh, stuck inside the, the heavy cover like that. But we do have the accomplished mortar team here firing away, and maybe we'll get some lucky shots. It's always a little dangerous to fire in your own crew, but yeah, you might as well do it. I mean, especially if it's a medic bunker that you're defending. Uh, meanwhile, the infantry are really pushing it from all sides here. You can see that it looks like the, uh, the machine gun team barely made it out of there with one guy left. Uh, the flamethrower engineers, however, are just kind of doing some serious damage, but we'll see uh, what's going to happen with this mortar team here. It's only got one kill so far, so it's not the worst thing ever. Uh, Greyhound up here on the right, doing some damage. Uh, minesweepers over here on the right. And it uh, looks like with the flamethrower engineers uh, coming up on them fast, the uh, mortar team was able to retreat. And meanwhile, we've got uh, fire versus uh, anti-tank gun. So I'm always curious about this guy here with this little Luger. Uh, he seems to get a surprisingly large number of kills. Uh, I just I, I just always see him turn around and cap somebody. Oh my god, look at that. Just freaking strafing run. Just strafing run everybody while you're at it. M my word. It's pretty good. Oh, right in the cabeza with a... Cabeza? Right in the skull with a mortar around there. Uh, apparently I speak Spanish. I get tired. Apologize for that. Um, looking around, looking around here. What else we got going on? <laughs> I really love this. Like, well, we're out of here, but by the way, we're taking this pack with us. So, uh, uh, acquiring some anti-tank technology for themselves. Ooh, that was a sniper shot from a survival sniper over here, level 2. I do love the survival sniper, although, uh, you know, I'm not usually one to complain about long-lasting bugs. Ooh, destroyed engine again. He's just having no luck for having so many minesweepers out there. He's just having bad luck here. I was going to say, the survival sniper's final ability allows him to retreat while camouflaged, and apparently that's just never worked. He always just breaks camo and runs, so. Always sad to see that that's still there in the pack, right in the face, and this, this gentleman just got sent into orbit. Uh, meanwhile, we'll take a look back here, uh, see what this pack is up to, so at least that thing's paying for itself. Fatherland HMG team, not a bad position here, uh, but the sniper is definitely going to start doing some damage here, and this is exactly why you want it. Uh, I haven't even had a chance yet. Oh, unfortunately, he shoots the guy in the back. I really always, always just click directly on the guy with the machine gun. Uh, it's... You know, I'm sure he just kind of A clicked up there or something, but uh, it's always really effective because uh, it takes them that much longer to return fire in case they see you and that sort of stuff. Haven't been paying much attention to the base, but it's worth noting that uh, since he got his weapon, uh, sorry, since he got his motor pool, he back teched into a weapon support center and then got a triage center. And I'm seeing this kind of trend more and more is that the, the players tend to wait quite a while to get their triage center because it, it's nice to have it at first, but really until your until your squad is composed of two or three wounded guys, uh, you know, usually it's like whoever gets wounded gets killed, and so you just replace them, and your your overall hit points aren't that affected. But uh, late game, or mid game, it's nice to get that trio center out there, because by then you've got some wounded that actually do need healing, and uh, can make your squads a lot more effective. Uh, camo pack moving around, and like I said, uh, 
like I said, you know, sometimes I just say that and it's in reference to nothing, so I apologize. <laughs> Over here we have a Panzer Command coming out, and we have an accomplished Panzer popping out of it. So um, this is a good amount of armor here. Taking a, taking a look here, he's got uh, reasonable uh, damage versus everything. He's kind of a, this is a very well balanced tank, and I don't mean it's well balanced in the sense that like you know it's easy to kill or anything like that, but you know it's it's kind of good against all all things. Uh, very very well rounded tank. Not to mention the fact that it's a hero tank and has a whole bunch of abilities on top of that. So uh, the German armor in general is pretty scary, and uh, you know I kind of like that because honestly, part of this game that's fun. I mean I know the game th this is a game that needs to be balanced and all that sort of stuff, but part of it what's fun is the, this kind of historical notion that you know what yeah we showed up in Europe and the Germans had awesome tanks that really really killed us and we kind of worked our way around that and won the war. So I'm saying we because I'm American obviously, um, but you know to all the Canadians and, you know, Lithuanians out there. I apologize. So, anyhow, moving right along. We've got the accomplished Panzer moving right up here. And uh, I'm pretty sure that he does have sticky bombs by now, but we'll take a look and see if he's, like, panic researching it now. That, uh, he might be panic researching it. Uh, let me take a look here. Hope I'm not missing too much stuff. Oh, look at that. He is panic researching it. So he sees a Panzer and goes, oh, crap, there's a Panzer! And uh, goes ahead and gets his sticky bombs out there. Uh, man, I'm going to have a lot of complaints about this video. I'm sorry I'm being kind of goofy here. Uh, but know it's all good i totally missed this earlier by the way engineers uh these are definitely uh, air tailors engineers set these up just to make it a little bit more of a pain in the butt uh for spokey to get up here and uh grab this fuel point so uh panzer doing a pretty good job but oh sticky on the front bumper uh probably not going to do too much maybe uh, a little bit of a damage engine there once again retreating and because this fence is now down there's just no chance of anybody ever stepping on these landmines apparently and uh by the way this is the second thing that spokey was producing is a panther tank uh these are incredibly good uh panthers uh, the one thing they're not super good at i mean they, they do a ton of damage so the, their effectiveness th these numbers are kind of crazy i mean they go from one to ten they, they're roughly an effectiveness but it's trying to say that in general they're not nearly as good against infantry as they are against other things but as you can see they blow the hell out of infantry too so uh, panthers really good i mean really good so uh but luckily sticky bomb on the tailpipe uh not going to be having a good time with that and there's the damage engine uh both of these tanks have damage engines and as you can see i failed to point this out duffy's anti-tank gun is up here firing away uh thankfully spooky has the uh presence of mind to be slowly retreating all these guys out of here uh backwards but we've got some construction pioneers popping up here just kind of harassing this anti-tank gun. It's really hard for anti-tank guns to fire back. Uh, this is just annoying harassment. It's going to take these guys forever to kill anybody. Hopefully by then he can show up with some reinforcements to uh, help it out a little bit. But oh, the one guy who could shoot back just got killed. It looks like these engineers might even get a free kill on Duffy's anti-tank gun here. Uh, do I dare? Oh, and there it goes. And unfortunately, I, I, I always kind of thought this was dumb, but like... Um, oh, and here comes the backup. A little late. Only three of them. Uh, but, you know... <laughs> Look at him placing landmines right into this anti-tank gun. That is a clever, clever thing that I missed on my first viewing of this. I don't know if anybody's going to pick that up, but we'll just keep an eye on that. Um, I was going to say, unfortunately, mortars and anti-tank guns have a minimum requirement of two guys. So if you happen to kill the, the second guy, the third one just falls over dead. Maybe he knows what's coming and just plays dead or something, but who knows. So uh, we'll have to see if, he's gonna, if he saw him lay those mines there. It's a great place to put mines. Uh, meanwhile, some deep back capping going on here. Uh, spoke he's got his accomplished Volksgrenadiers way out there and uh, otherwise we've got just a regular old uh, actually no this is the Stalin pack uh, moving up here so let's see does he fall for it does he fall for it or did he not finish these landmines what's going on landmines landmines where are you uh, okay uh, maybe maybe I'm gonna miss some action here waiting for this to explode uh, well Apparently he's got completely dud landmines today because I haven't seen a single one go off on infantry. He's hit a couple of uh, vehicles though, no problem. Anyhow, uh, looks like just kind of, just kind of, kind of. <laughs> he's got land walk. <laughs> Sorry, he's got landmine walk ability. Oh my god, it's late at night. Anyhow, so good amount of scouting going on here. What was that? A strafing run? Yes, it was. Pile of bodies. Uh, looks like one, two, three, four guys killed out of that, and the fifth guy runs away to get gunned down. However, we do have some uh, backup stormtroopers that I know are coming here to finish the job, so a uh, pretty brutal-looking strafing run. Uh, moving on out. So uh, let's take let's take some inventory here and see what's going on here. We've got a lot of back and forth going on here. Good amount of tank stuff. And uh, Spokey, the one thing we always got to watch out for for these guys is the manpower blitz heavy armor support. You know uh, any Blitzkrieg 
uh, player is just going to do that out of nowhere. That, that's the name of their game. They're going to win by pulling out a whole bunch of uh, tanks out of nowhere and uh, driving you to ground with them. I like this position for the bunker a lot better for obvious reasons. It's got a little bit of cover. It's almost exactly as centered as this one is in terms of where the fighting is going to be. Uh, it's just, I, I think it's a better all-around position. The only, the only difference is that you can't cover it with the heavy machine gun out the side of it as well. But, you know, good position for mortar teams and that sort of stuff. But uh, he does need to... Uh, move his army out a little bit because as you can see uh, Air Taylor really does have uh, pretty dominant control over this map so far except for the wandering tanks but you know he's got enough threat of uh, anti-tank guns out there that uh, Spokey is forced to be a little bit cautious of his tanks because every time he's kind of poked his head out or even when he hasn't and he's just been hanging out in his territory he's been uh, snuck upon by uh, snuck upon by uh, anti-tank guns so uh, finally recapping this point, just to take a look at the score here, 366 to 264, so Spokey is uh, about 100 points behind, more or less. And uh, we do have a uh, re fully repaired version of both of these vehicles are out, and here comes a bit of a, uh, <laughs> a bit of a clash going on here, so we'll have to see. Uh, can the tanks avoid the sticky bombs? Will they be able to do some serious killing here? Uh, luckily, the HMG team here is suppressing all these units, making it much easier to poke them. Uh, Meanwhile, we do have a nice flank here. I always love this. You can see he's just putting a ton of uh, focus fire right on top of this Fatherland HMG team. He knows that that's a priority target if he ever wants to have any chance at being able to sneak up here. Both uh, anti-tank guns now moving up, picking up the rear. Uh, nice little buffer of troops between both of them. Uh, one set of troops is retreating here. It looks like there was two men left there. Everybody else is just backing up. I always like that kind of control. Uh, it's, it's best to just really identify who absolutely has to run away and who can just walk away. And uh, that's what we've got here. And uh, another little good detail, another good habits of effective players. He he's got four guys. He picks up the machine gun and retreats the last guy left over, uh, putting three of them into a machine gun. So just, you know, making good use of the ordinance that's already out in the field. So looking good there. So let's keep an eye. Let's keep an eye on our uh, Blitzkrieg commander here. Spokey is uh, getting close to the point where he'll be able to use this, uh, but he just we'll see this pretty soon. We'll see this pretty soon. Just you know, you got to think. 150 munitions. He needs to have about 600 uh, manpower, and then he can fire off his manpower blitz, and then 1600 heavy armor support. Uh, but he.